During the weekend of September 12th and 13th, 2009, this dilapidated old hotel in the Catskills became the temporary world headquarters of, and I say this with love, Indie Rock Dorkage. How would you describe it? I mean, I've been trying to come up with descriptors like indie rock summer camp. Oh, In indie summer camp, I don't know. Somebody <laughs> said uh, part dirty projectors, part dirty dancing. What about part cocoon, part shining? That's not that's, bad either. Yeah, that's, yeah. What that, that's what Debra yeah. said, is cocoon meets the shining. That's, that's, that's here, that's the idea. <laughs> it's just about time to give I've been to a lot of festivals. And usually, and I'm saying this as a curmudgeon, usually they're really annoying and uncomfortable. This one is totally not. Is it's that an anti-festival. It's an anti-festival. Yeah. Well, it's the, yeah, but it's, the whole thing is it's intimate. It's like most festivals that you probably go to are just like 20,000 people, they're in a field, there's like some big corporate lager that like, tastes terrible and costs like 20 bucks a, 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 you know, a cup. And it's just like the bands don't sound great, they're too small. And the whole thing about this is it's small, it's in a ballroom, and the music sounds amazing amazing and you feel like you're part of the show as opposed to just like some idiot in the field. I like not feeling like an idiot in the field. Yeah, yeah. It's like you get a curator and it's just like they're making a mixtape for you. How did you pick the bands for your curation here at ATP? For us it was easy. We just sort of went down the list and we sort of marked off almost every one of our favorite groups. Who did you want that you couldn't get? I mean, who was your, like, I'm going to tell you, now, I had a couple ideas that weren't actually musical, and I don't know if they're disturbing, but luckily they didn't happen, so we'll never have to know. I actually thought, you know, I love Muhammad Ali, you know, and he's still alive, and I thought, wouldn't it be great if we could have Muhammad Ali on stage, and everybody in the audience could sort of walk up there one by one and punch him in the stomach? <laughs> It seems to me, and you correct me if I'm wrong, if I'm judging a book by its cover inappropriately, but it seems to me that you're saying this as a dyed-in-the-wool music dork. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's a fairly accurate description. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're, you're probably right. But the whole thing is, it's just like... We still get blown away by lots of people that we work with. I mean, we got to like work with Iggy and the Stooges. I mean, my God, the amount of times I've danced around at home to those records is incredible. All right, here's the quote that got you in trouble. Killing Joke and Butthole Surfers will never play ATP again, and they can both oh, And you could put that in print. The Black Lips will never play again. They're ass. They broke into a chalet and started stealing stuff. All true. They, they did. Yeah. They, they broke into a chalet and started stealing stuff. It's like... <laughs> Words to haunt me. Yeah. <laughs> so the, it, it, as much as you try to make this sort of a touchy-feely type of event, occasionally things go awry. There's so many so other great like bands. You, you don't need to have them. Like, you know, and also, like, Killing Joke, they just... They just they're, they're the most obnoxious people we've come across in a long time. Oh, really? We've come across some horrible people. And, you know, with, there's a lot of bands out there that are great and they're just not very nice people. got back together for this reunion uh, set of dates. Uh, it was great because it felt like no time had passed. And uh, we had discussed like, you know, when we see each other, we're gonna cry like babies. But we didn't. We hugged for like three minutes and giggled like children. It was so, so cool. It was so great. Are there, are there people who you can talk about that you're not working on yet, but you're still sort of fantasizing I'll tell about? you what would be really good, is if he's watching and would do this, Neil Young, do, with Crazy Horse Only, doing On the Beach. 
Good that girl. would be, because that's his best record. Some people say Harris, some people say After the Girl Rush, but On the Beach, that's the one. In fact, I've heard that he thinks that is the best record. Every single track on that album is the, the bomb. And I mean, it seems to me that you sit around, the two of you, and you think, wouldn't it be cool if? Bands that we like, absolutely. Yes. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, totally. very scary. <laughs> but I've always dreamed about sort of like seeing things like Iggy and the Stooges. And, and I said to Deborah one day, imagine if we saw them perform the whole of Funhouse from start to finish and played every single song in track order. It'd just be like when you heard that record for the first time, you'd lose your mind. And, like, and then we, we asked them to do it and we started this season called Don't Look Back where we get bands to perform albums. It's, it's like us taking our records out, putting them on the floor and going, right, we're going to ask this, this and this. And it is, maybe, maybe we are nerdy dorks, but I don't care. It's just like, you know, we're just, all, all we're trying to do is do something that we believe in and it is the, it's, it's like an alternative to the bigger thing. Thank you.